Her nude body glowed like marble in the dim light. Horribly, her feet began their climb with a little catch step suggested by the moaning chant of that cracked organ note. She reached the first of the undead, and Cliff saw a light glint on a knife blade. A crimson gash appeared in the flesh of her thigh, and dead lips touched that wound, drank thirstily. The girl strode on, blood gleaming darkly on the white skin. A second drank of the crimson flow, a third, and the blood ceased gushing forth. Another knife flashed, and lips closed again and again on a redly dripping wound. And the girl, with the unchanging pace of a robot, climbed the stairway to its very top, climbed while fiendish corpses drank her life's blood, climbed to sink down on the altar. One of the red-clad figures stooped over her, lifted her, buried long teeth in her throat, and Cliff saw his face. His own face paled, and talons of fear raked his brain. Those others on the stairs? They were abhorrent zombies freed from the grave. But this monster, a vampire vested with the lust and cruelty and power of hell. He lowered her, finally, and she sank down, lay still beside the other three. Another began the hellish climb, a giant of a man with a thickly muscled torso. Cliff knew him instantly, and his heart seemed to stop. Leslie Stark. They'd played football together. A brave man, a fighter. He mounted the stairway with the same little catch step. The same plodding stiffness. No resistance, no struggle. Only a hell of fear on his face. The marrow melted from Cliff Darrell's bones. What? What could he do against a power that did that to Les Stark? He tried to swallow, but the saliva had dried on his tongue. He wanted to turn to Vilma, but he could not wrench his eyes from the frightful spectacle. Up the stone steps Stark strode, and no blade leaped toward him, no thirsty lips closed on his flesh. In an unwavering line he mounted toward the cowled monster in the center of the dais, like a puppet on the end of a string mounted to pause before the stone altar, to lie on it, head bent back, throat bared. Mercifully, Cliff regained enough control to close his eyes. He opened them at a gasp from Vilma, saw the vampire rise the flaccid body of Les Stark and hurl it far from him, to crash to the stone steps, to roll and thud and tumble down and down, sickeningly to lie awkwardly twisted on the floor before his companions. And another began to climb the long stone steps. All through the interminable night, Cliff and Vilma crouched on the ledge, staring through the barred window. A hundred times they would have fled to escape the maddening scene, but they could not move. Senses reeled before the awful monotony of the ceaseless climbing, their eyes smarted with fixed staring. Their tongues and throats were parched to desert dryness. Yet only after hours of endless watching, only after the last victim had climbed the steps, did the edge of terror dull and a modicum of control return to their bodies. Stiffly, Cliff looked over his shoulder. A faint tinge of gray rimmed the sea on the eastern horizon. Almost daylight, he whispered hoarsely. Vilma nodded, her gaze still held by that chamber of horror. Cliff followed the direction of her eyes and saw Corio standing like a great bat in his hooded cape close to the far wall. He raised his four-piped horn to his lips, and the instrument's fourth note crept through the room. It was a doleful sound, a cry like the cry death itself might possess. Yet oddly and horribly it was soothing, promising the peace of endless sleep. And touched by its power, the columns of undead stiffened, thin to wraiths, followed as water flows down the stone steps. Vanished. The dead alive, those five vampires in crimson cowls, looked upward uneasily.